It's now time to introduce our last but not the least speaker. Um, he is a veteran on the war of talent. And he, his tour of duty includes recruiting armies of talented individuals for BPOs and contact centers. He's currently in the front lines of the recruitment digitization revolution, championing the use of AI, machine learning, and other forward-thinking technologies that enable HR to match the right talent with the right opportunity. To talk about the seamless candidate journey, let's all welcome Mr. June Abo, VP of Talent Acquisition of Transform Philippines. Awesome. Uh, All right, June. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, such an awesome introduction. Uh, and it should be since I'm the one who wrote that introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. Go. All right. Um, again, everyone, thank you. And uh, thank you for inviting me again, Aris, uh, Max, to this uh, recruitment hack event. Um, I've always been uh, a big fan of this event, and I always look forward to either participating as part of the audience or speaking um, in this event. Um, I'm June Abo. June, born in July, so it's easier to remember. Um, I've been recruiting for the past uh, 20 years. Um, and uh, just to give you a sample of uh, what a life of a recruiter is, um, a lot of different point of views in terms of who or what a recruiter is. But really, a recruiter is someone that is really a, a fairy job father because we provide jobs to everyone. So let me get started with the video. Imagine seeing this video on your Facebook feed. Meron pa bang bagay sa mundo na mamahalin mo ng DKEY? Hanap ka ng hanap. Minsan, hindi mo napapansin. Nandiyan lang pala siya sa kalitin mo. In life, mahirap talaga maghanap ng bagay sa iyo. So imagine, imagine this, you're sitting at your home, you're going through your Facebook feed, you saw this video, and after going through the video, you became interested in learning more about who produced this video and you found out that this is actually a job ad. You click on that ad, you go to a Facebook messenger where you're greeted by a very entertaining and very engaging uh, recruitment bot. You start asking questions and you proceed with your initial queries and you find yourself being entertained and because you're entertained all throughout that journey, you start completing every step of the process. You find yourself taking your online language assessment. You find yourself taking all of the di different uh, interviews virtually. And then all of a sudden you get a call from HR and you said, would you have time to discuss your job interview um, and your results of your job interview? All virtually without having to leave the confines of your home. So what you've just imagined is actually a digital recruitment journey. What, from a recruiter standpoint, what we would normally look at would be the various phases. It's advertise and search, it's screening, it's, it's testing and interview, it's a job offer and onboarding. Now, what if you have an awesome recruiter that can handhold you all throughout that four stages of that recruitment journey? What if you have your own recruitment concierge that allows you and guides you to make your journey from one stage to the other more seamless? Meet says he is our hardest working recruiter. Um, and why is hard, uh, a hardworking recruiter? When, when the ECQ came in, we asked him to go home. And even at home, even during the lockdown, he was still recruiting for us. Um, even while sleeping, he was still recruiting for us. So that's why Cess for us is our hardest working recruiter. Now, before I proceed, um, I have a poll here. 
uh, that I'm interested uh, in uh, asking everyone. Aris? So what's your perception of recruitment chatbots? One, do they make the process easier and friendlier? They're a bit annoying but gets the job done. They're awesome. I love bots in every way. I hate bots. I'd much rather talk to a human. And I don't love bots but prefer them to waiting weeks for a reply. Let's see what everyone thinks. Awesome. So they make the process easier and friendlier, which is the majority of the response. Uh, second, they're a bit annoying, but gets the job done. Uh, the third one is they're awesome. I love bots in every way. And there's few answered, I hate bots. I'd much rather talk to a human and I don't love bots, prefer waiting. So just to give you an example, um, when we first launched CES um, in looking after our recruitment process, what we realized that uh, there, we were getting a lot of candidates on top of the funnel, but not a lot of candidates were moving towards the next stages of the funnel. And when we did a deep dive, what we, re what we found out is that the way the conversation was being handled was very robotic, very boring. Um, and chances are, if you've encountered a bot while doing your transaction, if you're not engaged, if you're not entertained, you're not going to push through. So we sat down with Max's team and uh, we redesigned the conversation. So as the conversation became more friendlier, more engaging, we started conversing in memes and GIFs and emojis. And because of the difference in type of conversation, we now saw a bigger chunk of our candidate pool moving towards the next stage, to the next stage, to the next stage. So conversation is key. We've optimized our hiring process We've used at digital marketing, uh, creating content that is uh, relevant to the times. We've engaged with using conversational chatbots and digital tool to make it an end-to-end -end seamless experience. So as our TA folks, they're more efficient in terms of delivering awesome and candidate experience. So just to give you a sample, let me share with you what it looks like before the old process on the left side and the right the new process. Candidate nowadays, they're looking for that consumer experience. And what is that consumer experience? You, you go to Amazon, you go to Lazada, you see a product that you like, one click, and you're able to buy it. Candidates nowadays, they're looking for um, job posting to go look for them on where they are, and that where they are is on Facebook. Um, when they see you on Facebook, they would like that same convenience in terms of one click to apply. That video you saw earlier, a candidate can click on an ad and in less than five minutes be pre-qualified and get endorsed to the next stage. What that means for recruiters here on this, uh, on this webinar, it's that the biggest challenge for us recruiters uh, for the longest time has always been we've managed to hoard leads. And in order for us to contact leads, we need to have call out teams in order to validate those leads, in order to schedule those leads. With the help of a bot and engaging conversation, you're able to manage all of that in five minutes. 
Cess is also well trained that he's able to answer all of the necessary questions that candidates would potentially ask. Like, for example, do you have a gym on site? Do you provide HMO? Yes, we provide HMO. It's day one. I have kids. Do you have a childcare? Yes, Cess would also provide that uh, answers to that question. Cess is also trained to answer what's your culture like? And CES is going to provide you videos in terms of our engagement activities. What's your compensation like? Again, being transparent, we want to make sure that our, we set the expectations at the early onset. And if you're really keen in applying, you want to find out, um, get tips on how to apply. CES is your recruitment concerns that is going to provide you tips in terms of how to get hired. So, the, in this lockdown period, there's a lot of issues, a lot of questions. How does recruitment remain relevant? And Ange touched on this earlier today. Um, Penny talked about this. It's, this is an opportunity for you to highlight culture within your organization, to highlight what's going on, to tell people's stories, because you are pushing forward brand awareness. So in Transcom, how are we currently putting this in practice? How are we communicating? So the first uh, couple of uh, things that we're doing is our company updates, um, informing employees and candidates on what we're doing to make things uh, safe. So we provide info sessions as well as infographics on uh, what the company is doing. Uh, we've shared stories about how our employees are coping. Uh, we've shared tips on what to do when you're at home. We've shared updates on uh, overall the organization. Next one, it's you provide virtual learning sessions and job interviewing tips. This is an opportunity for your talent community to go to your site and not just to interact, but also for them to learn because you're, again, you're building that talent community. So through our own Facebook pages, we made available in terms of what are the various uh, learning sessions and webinars that they can attend. We've actually even held the virtual career fairs um, in all three of our locations in Manila, Bacolod, and Iloilo. And for those of you who haven't done virtual career fairs, my friend, you're missing a lot because this is an opportunity to start building your pipe. Because you know, once the lockdown gets lifted, you know that there's going to be that big push for you to start filling those classes. So don't get left behind. Another advice in terms of how you communicate with candidates is if you change your hiring process, you need to inform them what that looks like. So for us, it's really informing them that it's all virtual. It starts with a click of a messenger uh, button and then ends all the way up to without even leaving your home, you get your job offer. I mentioned earlier that Cess is our hardest recruiter. We poached this guy from uh, Max's team. And how is he hardworking? He engages with candidates real time 24 seven. He manages candidates from various sourcing channels, whether that sourcing channel is employer referral, whether that sourcing channel is coming from an ad somewhere. Uh, Cess is able to tag that candidate um, and identify so as later on we can do some channel insights and analytics. Um, Cess also engages with active and inactive candidates forming a talent community for us. Imagine this, last year we have a total of 114,000 candidates in our pipe. We only hired 6,000. So that means we still have a big chunk of candidate that we can retarget for this year's demand. Real-time monitoring and, uh, and notifies recruiters whenever candidates passes pre-screening. So our recruiters would know when there are uh, candidate that's always available for interview and then schedules the candidates sends them that notification and when your interview is going to be due at the end of the day says for us is our recruitment concerns that holds the hands of our candidates all throughout the candidate journey so says is one part but the other part to make that whole digital recruitment journey for us complete um, that complements candidate experience, it's our online, our assessment is online. We are able to measure language capability, empathy and cognitive skills, again, in 15, 20 minutes. 
um, once you're done with your HR interview that's done via uh, Google Hangouts, we'd know that you're already uh, qualified to move on to the job offer stage. Your job offer is received via an electronic document and you can sign using your phone and then we'll get a copy of that job offer. And once you're onboarded, part of your pre-onboarding, it's of course, we develop an app called T-Buddy. Your T-Buddy is your own assistant that would allow you and assist you in every stage during your day one and onwards. And of course, in, in every application, we still have all these little helpers, all these little sis as your personal concerns. So some key takeaways. So for those of you who are actively recruiting, even for those who are not actively recruiting, these are some uh, key advice. On sourcing channels, you need to strike your balance between the effectiveness and sustainability of your sourcing channels. In the past, we've been very reliant on vendors. We've been very reliant on very expensive sourcing channels. But the future is engaging content. You need to know that your target market, especially for those in volume recruiting, your target market is on Facebook. Out of the 107 million Filipinos, 70% of them are on Facebook. So you need to differentiate yourself by creating content. Recruitment process, you need to automate, 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 right? Any of your repetitive and administrative tasks, those need to go and they need to be automated. You need to treat your bots as a key part of your team and align to your own uh, hiring goals. Online assessments. If your assessment is not yet online, then now is a good time to start looking at it. We shifted our assessment online and we looked at what's available in the market and the right online assessment actually allowed us to remove our hiring biases. In the past, we would normally just look at shifters or those with call center experience. But now with the right um, online assessment, we're able to identify and hire based on competency. And of course, last but not the least, the key takeaway for you guys, it's our leads are finite. It's, it's going to run out. And generating leads, adding more leads to your top of the funnel is expensive. So if you have a candidate relationship management tool or your APS that allows you to mine your existing database, then you create your own talent community. And this way, you're able to manage um, your leads and retap them when you need them the most. Lure them, and then you attract, you convert, you hire, and you delay. You couple all of these things, and for us, we'd like to consider our recruiting really, really ridiculously good. I'm Junabo. Don't take my word for it. These are some of the feedback of our candidates. Faster processing, best VPO in Bacolod. I can even apply and get a job offer while I'm at home. They have good quality service. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. This is June, born in July. Again, feel free to, if you have any questions, send them over. Thank you, Iris. Thank you. Thank you, June. I would admit, I'm actually surprised to know that Sess is actually a guy. Because all this time I thought, she was a girl. <laughs> Where did the, the name CES come from, by the way? It's actually short for, short for CSR. Customer Service oh. Representative. Ah, uh, all right, all right. Okay, okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get that at first. Okay, okay. We have one interesting question. I'd like to, to, to take this question now. This is actually from Man Batalones of 24-7. Is it fair to change the candidate profile to adjust to the new normal to include their internet readiness? Is it fair to change the candidate profile? I guess, you know, the profile that, that the candidates are looking for to adjust to the new normal to include that their internet readiness? Um, so for us, um, we're actually already offering work at home uh, agents. Uh, there are programs that we are going to be rolling out um, as part of work at home. And uh, part of the new normal, it's a certain percentage of our programs need to move into a work at home model. Um, okay. So minimum expectation includes uh, capability, internet capability, as well as uh, at least a space in your 
house that uh, you can take calls privately without any uh, background noises. Distraction. Okay. And just out of curiosity, these work from home uh, programs that most companies have, you don't have to be specific, are these fixed term projects or these are like permanent roles, like the usual CSRs that you're hiring? It's permanent roles. Wow. wow. Yeah, I think what this this whole virus did, it's, it forced a lot of companies to take a look at the work-at-home capability in the Philippines. We've always in the past said, no, the infrastructure is not enough. But now that we're forced to do it, we're seeing firsthand that, yes, uh, we are able to do it, right? Uh-huh. Necessity is the mother of all invention. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, thank you, June. We still have a lot.